Hello everybody! We got one more movie from 2022 that I'm trying to catch up on, and that is Strange World. The latest animated feature from Disney was directed by Don Hall and Kui Wynn and takes place in the fictional world of Avalonia. This world is home to legendary explorer Jaeger Clade, which is an awesome name, voiced by Dennis Quaid. And at first it seems like his son Searcher, not so awesome a name, voiced by Jake Gyllenhaal, would follow in his footsteps. But Searcher gets a new calling in life after an amazing discovery of a plant that generates electricity. He would much rather devote his life to research and farming, and he and his father go their separate ways. But they are reunited many years later when some unknown force threatens the world they've built, and their journey takes them underground to a... strange world. You would be forgiven for missing this movie because Disney did not do all that much to promote it. It didn't help that it had some competition at the box office from The Menu and Glass Onion and The Fablemans, and Wakanda Forever was still going strong at the time as well. And that's a shame because this really wasn't half bad. I wouldn't say it was one of Disney's best or anything, but it was perfectly fine. Probably would have done better if Disney had put some actual effort into the promotion. And there are a few possible reasons for why they didn't. One of which is that this is the first Disney movie to feature an openly gay main character. Searcher's son, Ethan, who is voiced by Jabuki Young White, has a crush on another boy in Avalonia his age. And the movie treats this as a totally normal thing, as it should. He's a teenager with a crush, and everyone treats him like any other teenager with a crush. Of course, I cannot say for sure if that's why they didn't put much effort into promoting this movie, but if that is indeed the reason, shame on them. In the year of our Lord 2022, this should not be a big deal. The movie doesn't even make it a big deal. Another possible reason, probably not a lot of merchandising material in this movie. And you know, Disney is all about the merch. During their journey underground, they meet a character called Splat, which they might be able to make a toy out of, but that's probably about it. And I could certainly see some marketing asswipe not wanting to bother with this if there's no toy potential, but you would think they would also want to at least make the budget back at the box office, so if this is their reason for not promoting it, it's not bigoted, but it is stupid. So let's get the obvious out of the way. The animation is fantastic. It's Disney. Why wouldn't it be? I do like what they did with the design of Avalonia. It's a world where technology developed very differently from our own. The presence of electricity, even though it is coming from this weird-ass plant, certainly makes it feel a little familiar, but there's a foreign element to it as well. Most of their travel is based on airships rather than land-based vehicles, and it has kind of a retro sci-fi feel to it. And they really got creative with the subterranean world. Very bright and colorful, feels very alien with these numerous weird creatures and landscapes. Well done. The voice acting was pretty solid overall. Dennis Quaid in particular really nailed Jaeger Cade, this larger-than-life explorer. This character has one speed and one volume, and they are both permanently stuck at maximum. Also, Alan Tudyk has a few roles in the movie, and he makes everything better. The story was pretty well done. I don't think there's necessarily anything here that will make Strange World stand out as an all-time classic, but it was fine. I enjoyed the journey they took through this underground world, and the big reveal about what's actually going on down there was handled pretty well. And at a runtime of only about 100 minutes, it doesn't really have time to wear out its welcome. And similar to Turning Red, the story is really a backdrop for intergenerational conflict. Jaeger and Searcher have very different worldviews, and it's kind of driven a wedge between them, even though deep down they are basically the same person. And despite his best efforts to avoid what happened between him and his father, Searcher seems to have similar issues with Ethan. And the story is all about these different generations learning to accept one another and also to be true to oneself. In the end, I doubt it will win any awards, but it's not a bad film, and I certainly think it deserved better than the $72 million it made at the box office. Obviously, it's a little late to make up for that, but if you have Disney+, it's worth a watch. And that's all I got to say about Strange World. Till next time, take care.